right, this is uh, the ground prep. To get the uh, barometric pressure set, you press this button down here. It says barrow, and you can adjust the barometric pressure. Other features on this is you can set an alti altitude for where you want to climb up to. To set that, you put this right button twice. Set it up to the altitude you want. In this case, I'm just going to go up to 3,500. Okay. If you don't touch the button again, it will automatically come off the magenta color, go back to the heading mode. If you're in the heading mode, you can make the adjustments this way. The other thing you're going to see here is you've got uh, this GPS route information. I'm going to heading 186 to Canny intersection, 46 and a half miles away. Course is automatically set for me for the HSI. I can do that manually by turning off a feature in the menu button. It basically allows it to, to operate as a standard HSI. But in this case, I want the waypoints to progress automatically and, and reset the HSI every time we move. You've got your magnetic compass, flux compass here. And in this particular case, it matches the 318 that comes off the MFD. They're two independent separate units. And then here's your heading bug that you can set to whatever heading you're looking for. In this case, I don't, I'll set the autopilot to fly GPSS mode, and I'll explain that in a little bit. You also have here the ability to select multiple sources of information. So here I can push the right button and, you, and circle through all of the different nav signals I have. In this case, VOR1, I'm not receiving it because I'm on the ground too far away from it. But you can also select the other one to be the second VOR. And in, in this case, uh, both of these frequencies uh, will show up as an, as an RMI, and I'll show that a little bit later in flight. Another feature on the um, unit, you can set a pre-programmed airspeed. So if you want to fly and approach at 100 knots, as a reminder, you can set this at 100, and it'll beep at you. Same thing with the altitude, as you climb up to your altitude, it will beep at you, letting you know that you're um, within 200 feet, and it will change depending on how fast you're moving. You have a true airspeed calculation and ground speed information, as well as temperature outside, and then again, the barometric pressure. The airspeed indication here, as well as the altimeter, can be turned off in the menu, so you, you can just go with the standard HSI, I'm sorry, AI presentation without the uh, speed tapes. All right, apologize for the bumpy video. It's a little bumpy out here today again. But in any case, I uh, just want to go through the features real quick of the of the Aspen while you're in flight. So here, here you have your airspeed tape. You have the altitude tape. You also have your normal uh, V speed colors all indicated on the, on the unit. And as you get close to your uh, v speeds, they actually pop up on the tape showing you uh, VSO, etc. Again, those tapes can be shut off. Now, the true airspeed is located down here. I've got the power back. I'm flying 140 knots. Ground speed is 134. Calculated from the GPS information, it comes back and tells me that currently I have a 255 degree knot, I'm sorry, 255 degree wind coming in at 13 knots. Outside air temperature is 10 degrees. Down here on the HSI itself, you've got the, again, the navigation signal that you're flying, which happens in this case to be the GPS, the Garmin 650. I'm flying a heading a uh, course of 186. The autopilot's flying a 191 or so heading to maintain that um, 186 course to uh, Candy Intersection. Um, the ground track is that little blue uh, turquoise color thing at the end of the tip. That's telling me where I'm crossing across the ground. And what you see here is the heading uh, is now controlled by the GPSS roll steering. So it will do all the turns and everything associated with a normal um, track. So if, you, if I were to have a turn here, which I will with Canny, um, the airplane will follow the, the magenta line. The HSI down below I mentioned earlier that you can put multiple signals in here, so I can bring in the VOR signal for a local uh, VOR on my number one radio. 
<clears throat> and it's showing the an H, H, I'm sorry, RMI needle to point. So it's really nice if you're going across, um, like on an approach, you want to cross a, a point, you can set that to be on, <clears throat> excuse me, and you can actually track your um, um, crossing of the radio. So it tells me where that radio is. Same thing on this other side. I have the ability to turn on the, the same VOR information. In this case, the second VOR is off. As soon as I turn that radio on, I bring in the radio. Now I got a valid signal, and it's showing the other VOR that's near me. these extra buttons on the side here so these buttons are all to control different things so if I'm flying an approach I can hit this button here and get a minimum set for the approach so when I do my approach briefing I can put that information in there as I mentioned earlier you can bring in your new altitude settings for different settings for different um, uh, phases of your approach and you can set those in you also have the ability down below what what's not real apparent is this is not just your run-of-the-mill uh, HSI. You've got information here that's coming over from the GPS. If I get messages from the GPS, uh, I'll get a little message thing that pops up. It's telling me that I'm in a terminal mode right now. If I go into approach mode, it will actually show an approach mode uh, in there. In addition, um, I can take this unit, and if you, there's nothing underneath me right now, but I can zoom. Sorry about the bumps. I can zoom in a little bit. And you can see now there's stuff populating underneath that map. And there's a moving map underneath the HSI. So if I have a course um, waypoint, you can see my candy waypoints ahead of me. So I can actually zoom in and zoom out on different things underneath. Well, that might be nice if it's... But the problem is it's pretty cluttered there as it sits. So they give you the ability to go into an open mode and it has its own uh, arc mode where you can actually go in and, and do the exact same thing again. You can bring in points so you actually can see HSI needle in an arc mode and then the uh, waypoints that are near you. Here's the uh, descent profile. I'm going down to 2400 feet. Traffic, and you can five see nine, I've got nine, that nine, preset nine, and I'm doing 370 feet per uh, minute descent at this point. There's also a vertical uh, speed indication in the analog form down below, but I find this much more effective. As you get closer to uh, flying approach, this is an LPV runway 29 for Chester County. You can see that the uh, vertical and horizontal guidance uh, indicators are popped up on the attitude indicator. You can see they're both showing off course. That's because I'm intercepting the final course Parker course here, and vectors the final. Once these become alive, Central turn Jersey, seven, seven, left base for an extended final two five Central Jersey. When these turn alive, they both end up uh, turning green, and you'll see that um, they'll come alive, and you'll be able to track them in now. At this point, the uh, autopilot is switching over and in the process of capturing the signal. And you can see that both the attitude, I'm sorry, the altitude and the horizontal are both alive, and the autopilot's correcting for both. Okay, so what you can see here is that the autopilot is flying a hundred knot true airspeed, about 92 knot ground speed. I'm a little bit left, of course, still a little bit high on the glide slope. But the visual outside is not too bad. That's certainly something doable.